Hello, welcome to the Red Men TV. I'm Chris Pajak. It's the Transfer News Show. It's back throughout the January transfer window. It's a new year, it's a new us with daily transfer content. Uh, we've got loads of stories to come up with. Thank you for joining me if you're watching it live. Thank you for watching the video if you're watching it on demand. Uh, so we're going to talk Christian Pulisic and his move to Chelsea. We're going to talk Dom Solanke. Is he going to go to Schalke or is he going to Crystal Palace? We're going to talk Rafa Camacho, that one kind of side. Swiped me a couple of days ago and his potential move to Sport in Lisbon before we start to look ahead to tomorrow night game against Manchester City. We'll talk a little bit about uh, some team news for that and then we'll get into your comments right at the end of the video. So we'll start off with Christian Pulisic. Chelsea sign Borussia Dortmund forward for £58 million, pounds, aka £64 million. Euros, and he will be loaned back to Dortmund until the end of the season. Madness, isn't it? I think I put a tweet out earlier this morning. Along the lines of a year ago, I'd have lost my head about this deal. You know, I wanted Liverpool to sign Christian Pulisic. I think he's a great player. I think he's got the potential to be an outstanding footballer. I think Liverpool maybe would have been interested in him because he's American, because that market with FSG is our owners and stuff like that. But nowadays, I'm kind of like, sounds, go for it. It probably means that Hazard's going to leave you and you've replaced him with a 20 year old kid, a talented 20 year old kid, of course, uh, but one that can't actually hold down a starting 11 place in Borussia Dortmund's side because of the likes of Jadon Sancho. And I think I've just got so much trust now in this Liverpool team, and I include uh, my uh, Edwards and Klopp and, and everybody else, that if Liverpool wants him, I, I kind of think like we'd have got him. And I don't know whether you agree or disagree. Let me know in the comments uh, about that and let me know what you think about that Pulisic deal for Chelsea as well. Will that be a good signing for them? We'll get to the comments later on in the show. But, you know, he's come out and said it's a privilege to have signed for such a legendary club. And I, I imagine that Liverpool fans may have taken a little bit of umbrage with that one. Um, listen, you know, whatever you think. And I joke about it all the time about Chelsea's history only starting in 2003. It's not quite technically true, and we like to have a jibe at other fans and stuff. I think I'm right in saying he won a, a European trophy in like 70s, sometime early 70s, maybe it was 71, something like that. But you know, it could be, it could be a good deal for Chelsea. I mean, you know, we know that he can play um, from the left, from the right, in that number 10 position, and we know he's a talented player. But it probably, for me anyway, and, and I might be wrong on this, it does kind of say that Hazard might leave them and. He always plays really well against us and he's a good player. And if he wants to leave and go to Real Madrid, I'd be absolutely fine with that. Anyway, that's enough about Chelsea. Uh, let's talk about why Liverpool didn't want to go in for Pulisic. And, you know, um, you can see here the Liverpool echo is saying, why Liverpool didn't sign Christian Pulisic and the player who convinced Jürgen Klopp it wasn't smart business. And listen, Klopp's a, a, a known admirer of Pulisic. I think everybody knows that. he's, he, You know, he, he was there when Pulisic was at Dortmund. He, he went as a 15-year-old kid, and he's even said here, I've known him since he was a kid, and he's still not really old. He's a fantastic player, and it's deserved that people think highly of him in America and Germany. It's the same. If he wants to play in England one day or whatever, he for sure has the chance to do so. So this was said back in the summer, wasn't it? Um, so there we go. Why didn't Liverpool rival the Londoners for his signature? Well, for a start, Pulisic wouldn't get into Klopp's starting lineup. And the reality, here we go, the reality is that Liverpool haven't seriously considered a move for Pulisic since they bought Shakiri for £12.5 million pounds last summer. Uh, he's been so good in his uh, 11 matches, scoring six goals, that I think Klopp realised that he's got really good value for money out of... Um, Jaden Shaqiri and spending uh, £58 million pounds on a 20-year-old is a, probably a big risk, certainly for a player who, as it's already mentioned in the article, isn't nailed on to get in the first team. And will Klopp really spend that amount of money for a non-first teamer? I'm not so sure, but either way, as I say, a year ago I'd have been absolutely gutted that he moved to one of our rivals. But right now I'm thinking either we've got someone better lined up, uh, which is the positive in me, or just we kind of didn't want him. So there we go. Uh, something that I was a little bit sideswiped about a couple of days ago, first broke, is Rafa Camacho uh, potentially going to sport in Lisbon back in his home uh, country of uh, Portugal. So 18-year-old starlet in Reds could lose 18-year-old starlet in £13.5 million pound deal. So I'm looking at this on Empire of the Cop. 
Uh, reports in Portugal suggest that Red's youngster Rafa Camacho could be set to sign for Sport in Lisbon on an initial loan deal with an option to buy for £13.5 million in a few months' time. So it's come out in... Um, in Portugal, and I looked at the website that it's an 18 month loan deal with the option to buy for 13 and a half million after the fact. And I was really surprised by this one because I felt like he was a guy that was going to be close to our first team. So let me know what you think of this one in the comments section below, and we'll get to that later on. But you know, we saw him in the pre season tour, we saw him, and he looked very, very good. We've seen him in match day squads. Um, so this one really surprised me because I wonder whether Klopp's thinking maybe he's not good enough to be a right winger at Liverpool with the likes of um, Mo Salah, Sadio Mane and Jadon Shaqiri there but then he's played right back as well and we've seen him play it right back for Liverpool so I wondered if it, that could be a move for him but it looks like right now He's going to be moving on, and I think that's a real shame because you just don't know with an 18-year-old, but maybe the £13.5 million pounds for how long we'd have to develop him for and would he ever get into the first team is is kind of just like, OK, let's take a chance. And it wouldn't surprise me if Liverpool put a buyback clause in there anyway uh, so that we could get him back. Uh, but very, very interested on Leicester, and we'll keep an eye on that over the next few days. Another player that we're going to keep an eye on uh, is Dom Solanke. So you can see on this one, this is Sky Sports, Crystal Palace still keen to sign Liverpool striker Dom Solanke. But we've also got, uh, where is it? Uh, we've also got Schalke interested. I don't know where that one's gone, apologies. We've also got Schalke interested in Dom Solanke. Now, according to some news outlets, Schalke are very interested. It looks like Dom Solanke, um, although his move to Crystal Palace looked a couple of days ago like it was going to be sorted. Schalke have come in sort of last minute and turned his head. Now, Schalke have come out and said, we're not interested in Dom Solanke. Jürgen Klopp himself in the press conference today said we're not talking about transfers, uh, whether that's proper transfers or loans. Dom Slanky would fall under the loan category, but apparently Crystal Palace are still interested and maybe that Schalke stuff has, has, has moved uh, to the back burner, as it were. Now, again, Dom Slanky, uh, you could understand why uh, Hodgson would want him at Crystal Palace. I think, you know, with Christian Benteke, long-term injury, Zaha not scoring or assisting in, I think, it's the last 12 Premier League games, uh, they're short of goals massively. Dom Slanky might, be able, might suit them in that regard. Uh, I think they've just got Conor Wickham coming back in um, after another injury for him. Um, so Dom Slanky, you know, uh, proper talent, but... In his 700-odd minutes for Liverpool last season, only managed one goal. Um, he's not really close to the first team right now. In fact, you know, you'd say that, first of all, you got Mo Salah as that number nine, then Bobby Firmino's number nine as well, uh, although he's playing as the 10. Then you've got the likes of uh, Daniel Sturridge and Divock Origi, who are arguably ahead of Dom Solanke in the pecking order. So, will he get minutes here? Probably not. Is it therefore better for his development if he goes out on loan? Probably. Is that... So what's better for him? Is it Schalke in Germany in the Bundesliga? I think they're four points ahead of the relegation zone. Uh, or is it Crystal Palace who are about the same? I think they're about four points ahead of the relegation zone. Uh, will he be looking at the likes of uh, Reese Nelson and Jaden Sancho and looking at what those young English talents are doing over in the Bundesliga and think I can do a little bit of that myself? Or will he think, you know what, let's get some minutes under me, in my legs in England in the Premier League against defenders that I'll come up against hopefully at Liverpool when his loan deal is done. He's been weighing these options up now, but it does look like... At some point this transfer window, Dom Solanke could be going out on loan. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section below. Um, so, um, it was the 1st of January last night, and yesterday actually for the whole day, um, and we had some mad Mercedes Melwood madness, didn't we? Um, so, a uh, taxi was spotted driving into Melwood, um, and everybody thought uh, Nabil Fakir was in Liverpool to sign for us. It turns out it's not. It wasn't, it never will have been, because he is in Mercia in Spain on warm weather training with Leon as they're on their winter break. But that didn't stop social media uh, going absolutely mental. So it was at underscore Paul Tomo posted a video of a silver Mercedes driving into Melwood with the tongue-in-cheek caption for Keir confirmed. Q Liverpool fans around the world going absolutely mental. This isn't happening. I mean, I just don't see a world where Liverpool signed Nabil Fakir. He failed his medical. We are not in for Nabil Fakir. But if we are, so what if I was wrong? Doesn't really matter to me. We've then signed a really talented footballer just with a broken knee. Um, so yeah, you can see, rather than Melwood, it has emerged. Fakir is actually in Mercia in Spain. Thank you, Liverpool Echo, for clearing that one up. Uh, some actual transfer plans for left-backs, actually, this time. Uh, so this is from squawker.com. 
and we've actually been linked with a couple of players. Um, the biggest link, I suppose, is Bristol City's Lloyd Kelly. 20-year-old has played 22 times for Bristol City in the Championship this season, demonstrating his versatility at both left-back and centre-half, scoring once. Um, so I think it's probably likely that Moreno will secure a deal uh, away from Liverpool, whether that's January or whether we hold on to him for the summer, don't know. But it looks like Liverpool will be in the market for a backup left back. Would you like to see Lloyd Kelly brought into Liverpool Football Club? Let me know in the comment section below. That'll be interesting. We'll keep our eyes on that one. Um, yeah. So, yeah, he sound basically. Um, Right, it's a big one tomorrow night. It's Liverpool versus Manchester City at the Etihad Stadium. It's first versus third in the Premier League. And Kevin De Bruyne will face a late fitness test for the Liverpool clash. I don't know whether this is a good or a bad thing. I mean, in my head, Kevin De Bruyne is possibly the best player in the Premier League. If I had to pick one player to cherry pick from any side in the Premier League, it would be Kevin De Bruyne. He's so talented, he's so dangerous, um, but Man City's midfield's proper strong anyway, isn't it? I mean, if Fernandinho comes back and if David Silva comes back in, then they'll probably pair those two with uh, Bernardo Silva, and that's a strong midfield three anyway. But if Kevin De Bruyne is in there, that's an even stronger midfield three. So let's hope, fingers crossed, that he fails that late fitness test because he is one of the best players in world football at the moment. Uh, on Liverpool's side of things, Klopp provides positive injury update ahead of Manchester City class, and it's that man there. It's that beautiful... Aging James Milner and Klopp beautiful as well. Uh, Klopp on Milner says Glenn Price ninety four on Twitter. Um, he's back in training. He's very influential in the dressing room. Very very important for us. Let's see what else people have said. BBC made side sport. Klopp. It's a normal game against Manchester City. A very difficult one. They're a really strong football team with an outstanding manager. They are still the best team in the world. We have to be brave. Uh, so again, Andy Hunter from the Guardian reiterating that for me, the opponents are still the best team in the world. And it's interesting that Guardiola's come out in his press conference and there's some serious mind games going on here saying at the moment Liverpool are the best team in the world that's what Guardiola says Klopp saying Manchester City are the best team in the world um, who do you think is the best team in the world let me know in the comments section so there we go let's get into some of them now mate um, yeah Pulisic yeah so on Pulisic breadsticks breadsticks says 58 million is a bit expensive it is isn't it you're not paying for what he is now, and I think when you realise that his contract was up at the end of next season, so what would that be, 2020, uh, it does seem like uh, a large sum of money. But here's the thing, £75 million seemed a lot of money for Virgil van Dijk, £65 million seemed like a lot of money for Alisson Becker. Um, if you get it right, and if Chelsea get it right with Pulisic, it won't seem like a lot of money if they get what a 20-year-old lad in for the next 10 seasons and he lights up the league and he fulfills his potential, then actually it won't seem like a lot of money. And that's the thing. Um, so they are fending off interest now and not paying a, a, a summer premium, as it were. Um, so listen, it could go either way for them. It could be an absolutely outstanding deal or it might be end up being quite expensive. Either way, at the moment for me, I, I tend to agree with you. I do feel like it's a lot of money for a lad who probably doesn't have the goals and assists to back it up right now at this young stage of his career. But, you know what, in five years' time, he might be looking at it going, what a deal that was by Chelsea, so fair play to them. Uh, next, mate. Uh, so, on to Camacho. Tommy Darland says, surprised if we cash in on Camacho. Still only 18, big potential. Yeah, I, I think it's, you kind of reiterate what I've said there. I mean... It, it really took me from you know by left from left field there. I, I was really surprised about it because he did look so close to it, didn't he? Um, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at some of the other comments. So Aring Singhashat and Gavin Yam uh, are just saying Timo Werner and Werner question marks. And it was an interesting one. We've got the podcast um, getting uploaded right now. It'll be out uh, at some point today. Um, me and Paul did quite a lengthy segment on quite a lot of these transfer things, actually. Uh, it was a great podcast, actually. I really, really enjoyed getting back in front of that podcast, Mike with Paul. Um, and we talked about, uh, you know, Timo Werner and would Liverpool play, maybe look for a striker, would play in this 4-2-3-1 now, maybe move Salah to the right wing and all that type of stuff. Timo Werner, for me, is still a great player and he still has that versatility that he can play left wing or from the right and play that number nine. I'm not sure. I think Liverpool need attackers. I'm not sure if we need them right now. 
Um, but I, I do feel like maybe Klopp will buy one player that can play two positions in that front three and utilise the versatility of Firmino, Salah, Mane, Shaqiri, rather than buy maybe a winger and a striker. Because right now, if you're buying a striker, you're buying a backup striker. Would Klopp do that? Not 100% sure. Is he going to spend big on a backup striker? Not 100% sure. Next one, mate. Uh, so onto Solanke, a lot of people when you asked said that they wanted him to go out on loan to a Premier League team, but uh, I just picked one out by the Caribbean bomber it says sell Solanke. We should use Brewster instead, and then Solanke. He's not that good. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, the Brewster thing—he's injured at the moment, isn't he? And he's coming back off a long, long-term injury. He's got that potential to be a, a, a world-class player. I, I think. Um, and maybe it will open up a spot in the squad for him if Solanke does go out on loan. But I think we need to. I don't. I don't think Brewster's having any impact on Klopp's thinking on this one because you don't know what Brewster's coming back from that injury. He's been out a long time. Um, Sankey's a good player. Maybe he hasn't done it. Maybe he doesn't suit us as much as we maybe thought he suited us when we saw him first play. Um, but he's still got the talent to make it. And if he shows drive and determination on a potential loan deal, then. You know, maybe he can come back a better player. It does feel like right now he needs minutes. He needs to get some goals under his belt, and that's why a loan move is probably best for him. Um, Steve O'Connor just said on Pulisic, no, I didn't want Pulisic because we don't need him. He's not getting into our side, is he? So, uh, Jordi Ella underscore FC, Chris, would you like to see Hassan win the next season play the 43-1 formation? I think I've answered that one. Uh, I would like, listen, if you're going to sign a striker, I would really like it to be uh, Timo Werner. Um, do you see Trent playing with field, said Rattouge and Tukar? Um, no, I don't. I did for the longest time, but right now... Why would you? He's one of the most effective right backs in the Premier League. You know, he's getting goals, he's getting assists, he, he's integral to the way that we play, and he's brilliant, quite honestly. Um, and he, he really facilitates the type of football that Jurgen Klopp wants to play at Liverpool. So I'm, I'm absolutely cool with that. Um, I can't read that because it's not in English. But your name said Ox is back. Um, he will be back, we think, in March, back in training in February, hopefully, if everything goes to plan. And it was great to see Jürgen Klopp talk about it. And we discussed this at length on the podcast as well, actually, so do get on that uh, when we uh, release that later on today. Anything else, Tom? Yeah, um, on the left-back stuff, first name, surname, says Lloyd Kelly would be perfect backup for Robertson, young, English, and has potential. I haven't seen much of him, to be honest. I, I mean, much? Never seen him. Never seen him play. Don't watch them. A lot of people in the comments are saying he's really good. Like so, good. I like that. Yeah. I, I want. I want us to be linked with good, up and coming talent. I mean, I've seen Session on playing. He's a player. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'd be absolutely happy with that. Okay, one final comment. It's going to be a little bit different. O Dog says pineapple on pizza. Yes or no? The answer is yes. Like the video, subscribe to the Red Main TV on YouTube and have your say on the pineapple on pizza argument in the comments. Uh, I'll be back later on uh, this evening with the starting 11 prediction for Manchester City versus Liverpool. And I've just dropped that old pineapple bomb on you. And now I bet you yeah, are all going mental in the comments and you're not even going to be able to rebuttal it because it's great because I'm going to end the video. So see you later.